what is different about my posture if, like, I was a missionary to China, okay, my family lives in China, we're missionaries, we're there to tell people about Jesus. Wow, I really don't like some of the policies of the Chinese government. I can't live here anymore. I don't like these policies. I'm going to set the government buildings on fire. I'm going to storm the Capitol. In, no, you would say, I'm a missionary here. I'm not, who says I'm supposed to like the policies? So what's the difference between me being in America and me being China, except for this sense in my head that America was supposed to be different from the beginning? Um, and China isn't. So that's what I want to boil down to is like, why do we have that sense and why can't we let go of it? Why can't we actually accept America for what it is rather than for some sense that we've built with bad history on what it was supposed to be and just say, hey, I'm a missionary here, just like if I lived in China and I'm not going to like everything that goes on, but that's not why I'm here. This Christian. is going to be such a surprise to you, Phil. Yeah. We are being programmed by TikTok, You're being, by AI, by, <laughs> by, by news organizations, by social yeah. media, by, and the flames are being stoked every day. They're stoking I my know. flames. It's shocking, yeah. shocking, isn't it? <laughs> well, I, I, you're right, Christian. There's no doubt that that's a big factor in it. But I think the message that we're really here's the difference. If you're a missionary in China, let's say you're a Western missionary in China, your primary allegiance is to Christ and his kingdom. Your primary allegiance is not to the Chinese government or even to the country of China. Whereas uh -huh. when you are a white American Christian in the United States, I think an argument can be made that for many of those people, their highest allegiance is to the United States. It's not to Jesus. And therefore, when they see the United States going in a way they don't like, it gets this visceral response in a way that it wouldn't if their highest allegiance was truly to Jesus, where their instinct would be more, okay, well, this is the land I find myself in. These are the people I am called to love and serve. I will continue to do that regardless mm -hmm. of what's happening in Washington, D.C. That's It's about identity and allegiance. And, and I also think that we have this false sense of that we have control. We have this false sense that I have control and I can make this happen. I can make this country be what I want it to be. You know, we can take over the capital. Mm -hmm. We can turn the tide. We can take power back. It's this fierce independence that we can, you know, change our stars. Think about it this way. I think you could make a case that there has been no group that has suffered more persecution and injustice over the last 500 years than African Americans. I mean, Native Americans for sure, but African Americans in a prolonged, systemic, horrific way. Enslavement, captivity, Jim Crow, you go on down the list. And yet in that 500 years of deep injustice and persecution, there was never a mob of Black Americans who rioted on the Capitol and felt justified in overtaking Capitol Hill. And yet one election happens where a group of white Christian Americans with no evidence are convinced that this election was stolen from them and they felt completely justified in destroying the Capitol building and going and raiding it. And to this day are still saying they were justified in what they did. What kind of warped perception of entitlement do you have to have to do that? If anyone had a right to do that, it was black Americans and they'd never done that. So that's how warped a sense of entitlement can affect your behavior when one perceived slight is justified in overwhelming force in retaliation, but centuries of true injustice, and there's no justification and no entitlement to do that. It's just so bizarre to me, but that's where that comes from, is, no, this is my country, I can do with it whatever I want, Yeah, there, and you yeah, can't stop a, me. There's a strong sense of this is the way it was supposed to be. This is right. the way it should be, and they're trying to make it a different way than the way it should be, and so I have the right to suspend the rules to make it the way it should yeah. be against the people that are following the rules but making it the way it should not be. And you go back and you look at whether it's Martin Luther King Jr. or Frederick Douglass, a lot of these great voices of civil rights, they appealed to the foundations of America. They appealed to the Declaration of Independence. They appealed to the Constitution to say, hey, let's live up to our ideals. And now there's a whole movement of white Christian nationalism saying, oh, wait a minute. 
the Constitution is not giving us what we want. Screw the Constitution. Let's get rid of democracy. Let's get rid of representation. Let's get, and it's like, this is insane. The moment it doesn't work out for white Christians, we're justified in scrapping the whole country, whereas a true persecuted minority has actually tried to uphold the ideals of this country in order to make it better for everybody. Everything's crazy backwards. It's just okay. nuts. Okay. The, the, this is from the New Yorker piece. The January 6th protester who prayed in the Senate, for instance, was Jake Angeli, known as the QAnon shaman, um, who previously referred to himself as part of a, quote, light occultic force. During his prayer, Angeli thanked God for the, quote, divine omnipresent white light of love and protection, peace and harmony. And then the New Yorker writer says, perhaps a shaman is the perfect figurehead for a movement defined by Christian heritage, not Christian faith. America may now be following the trajectory of Europe, where Viktor Orban, the prime minister of Hungary, talks about the importance of Christian roots, even though fewer than 20% of Hungarians attend church regularly. If the rise of Christian nationalism in America reflects the decline of Christianity, that is bittersweet news for secular liberals, because it means that they might expect to see more and more of it as the country grows less pious. So, mm -hmm. and this is in the New Yorker, which is interesting. They're saying, you know, that this is a big problem because Christian nationalism rising might be a sign of Christianity declining, yep. and it's becoming more of a cultural force than a theologically meaningful one. Totally. I mean, this is what Jesus and John Wayne was all about. And oh, we're just, we're man. seeing the, the fruit of it now. Oh, Christian, we're in trouble, Christian. We're in trouble. We, we are. It just makes me super, super sad. Oh, super man. sad. Maybe you'll get so a call. So I don't want to, I don't want to leave on this a way. sudden. You don't no, end this I don't want to end this way. Not you know what this, all. do you know where this leaves us? Exactly Please. where every other Christian in the world is. Living in a country that isn't, wasn't necessarily set up to cater to your comfort. And still following Jesus just fine. It's okay. I can mm -hmm. follow Jesus in China. I can follow Jesus in India. I can follow Jesus in Berkeley, California, or Austin, Texas, or Dallas. It's a messier in Dallas because of some crazy uh, megachurch pastors. But I can follow Jesus wherever I am, and I don't have to. Uh, I don't have to kick my neighbor out of the neighborhood to follow Jesus. 